keep it going for my friend, Queens' own, Matt Pavich, everybody. joke before you get all excited. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, hello, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm allergic to potatoes. <laughs> Anybody else? Of course not, right? That's fucking demented. Uh, <laughs> but it's true. I'm deathly allergic to potatoes. Uh, people don't believe me when I tell them for some reason. I'm always like, look, if I was going to make up an allergy, I would tell women I was allergic to latex. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> then finally they do believe me. This happens every time. Uh, for some reason they just list everything I can't have. Like I don't remember what has potatoes in it. So they'll just be like, wait, so french fries? <laughs> you can't have french fries? What about potato chips? Can you have potato <laughs> chips? No? What about mashed potatoes? <laughs> if you mash them up, you ever try to mash them? <laughs> what about gnocchi? <laughs> you can't have gnocchi? <laughs> oh my God, I love gnocchi. Gnocchi? <laughs> you can't have gnocchi? And yeah, I'm like, there's one ingredient in all the things that you just said, and it's the thing I said I can't have. You would never do that to an alcoholic, right? Some guy's like, 30 years sober, haven't touched the stuff. You're like, not even a dessert wine? Can you still take communion? People have dumb jokes for it. I was at an Irish pub once. The lady comes out, she's like, oh, you would have been fine during the potato famine. <laughs> no, I would not have been fine during, it was a famine. People were famished. Have to ride the subway a lot, because I live in New York. Uh, the other day I was on the subway, this guy got on behind me, scared the shit out of me, because he had a lot of face tattoos. <laughs> so I did what any normal human being would do, you know? I stared. <laughs> I also made a mental note. I said, let's make sure we know where this guy is <laughs> at all times. <laughs> I don't trust his decision-making abilities at all. I'm just gonna watch this guy. And I'm staring at him. He's got like barbed wire coming down his neck. He's got some Russian hate poem on his forehead. <laughs> he had tears, which scared the shit out of me. Cause there was little swastikas inside the tears. <laughs> yeah. And then he turned his face and I swear to God, he had the word vegan. tattooed on his face. I was no longer scared of that man. I went from being terrified of a stranger to like, this guy's probably anemic, he's got an iron deficiency. I'll fuck this dude up no problem, right? And that's the only word that it could have said, right? Shampoo, I'm still scared. Periwinkle, I've got questions. But vegan, I was like, you really want to go, bro? Let's go right now. <laughs> the only thing a vegan's gonna fuck up is a Yelp review. Let's do this, bro. <laughs> I'm from Queens. I don't always uh, take the subway. The other day, my high school valedictorian picked me up in an Uber. <laughs> that felt good as fuck. Five stars, buddy. I win. 
I am from New York. We got any real New Yorkers here tonight? <laughs> cool, yeah, I'm from Queens. Uh, I don't know if you guys know anything about Queens. Uh, it's one of the most diverse places in the whole world, which is pretty cool. So growing up, I thought me and my friends were not racist. Uh, <laughs> Then I got older and I realized that one of my best friends growing up, his nickname was Black Justin. <laughs> and we didn't even have a white friend named Justin. <laughs> there was no need for us to specify <laughs> which Justin we were talking about. His nickname's Black, that's what he said to my phone as. We're still friends to this day. He works at the gym with Chinese Eric, and together they were the question again. We call them rush hour when they're together, and they are doing just fine. <laughs> A lot of people say I look and sound like Adam Sandler. Uh, and after a while, it's just like, oh! a lot. Yeah, no, it's good growing up in Queens, you know, such a melting pot. I'll tell you what's weird about growing in New York. The, the commercials are very racist in New York. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed this where you live, but in New York, like, you turn on a rock and roll radio station, right? Commercial comes on, it's like, 1-800-M-A-T-T-I-E-S. The other S is for savings. Ooh, people need mattresses, yeah. But I listen to rap music, uh, hip hop, pretty exclusively. Uh, you turn on one of those radio stations here in New York, totally different experience, right? Commercial comes out on a hip hop radio station. It's like, <laughs> explosion, fire, bam, <laughs> bam, funk master flex, funk, funk master flex. <laughs> Hey, yo, you coming out to the club tonight, motherfucker? <laughs> I can't, man. I'm dead broke. Motherfucker, you still ain't called the Fry Institute of Technology. <laughs> the Fry Institute of Technology, what's that? <laughs> it's school, motherfucker. <laughs> I enrolled last month. Now there are several bitches on my dick, man. This shit is incredible. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. What's the number? Man, it's 1-800-LEARN some shit. <laughs> or just go online at www.devryuniversity.com backslash. Get your broke ass off that motherfucking couch. <laughs> Explosion. Fire. Bam. Funk master flex, funk, funk master flex. You gotta get your ass down to Western Beef. They got 496 potatoes for 89 cents. This shit is fucking crazy. It's fucked up, it's fucked up. Latino people uh, have the craziest commercials I've ever seen in my whole life. So. You guys win. Uh, I've never seen just like doom, got 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 ah uh, yo digital cable, whatever you do, whatever you do. You remember that commercial? That commercial's like eight years old. I'll still remember. A seven seven three nine three four four four. What did some guy fill out in a marketing survey that they made that commercial? <laughs> right, they sat him down, they're like, hey man, what are you into? He's like, oh. <laughs> I like pirates. <laughs> I like dragons. 
Mermaids, I love mermaids. <laughs> All right, listen, we're gonna put them in a house on the beach while it collapses, because that's how you sell digital cable to Hispanics. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's not good. Uh, My mom stormed the Capitol. <laughs> she also has an Android phone. Uh, so she's fucking up the family group chat in more ways than one, let me tell you. A lot. She didn't really storm the Capitol. She just went to the riot uh, and she was on the stairs and then she heard a loud bang, so she left with her church friend Yvonne. Yeah. She said it was one of the best days of her life. Uh, she birthed four kids. I'm one of those kids. She said it was one of the best days of her life. She got trumped, you know? We all know somebody that got trumped. It sucks, but what are you gonna do, right? It's uh, part of life, I guess. She raised four kids by herself. She's an amazing woman. She raised four of us, you know, pretty much by herself. And uh, we were poor growing up. Uh, we were poor. We were so poor that every time we went to the bank, she would get into a fight with the bank teller. To the point where I just thought that was part of the banking experience. <laughs> so when I finally got my first debit card, I was like, can I talk to the manager, please? <laughs> They're like, yeah, is everything all right? I was like, yeah, I'm at the bank. <laughs> this is how you bank. <laughs> They're like, no, it's not, sir. <laughs> And they escorted me out. She's a very religious woman. Uh, right now, she's a Messianic Jew. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Uh, it's a Jew that believes in Jesus. Uh, I tried to explain to her, that's a thing already, Mom. It's called a Christian. <laughs> she's figuring it out. I'm still poor, though. You know, like New York City poor. Like, uh, I have an apartment, and I own a credenza. <laughs> but every time I go to the ATM and it asks if I want a receipt, I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Don't be facetious, <laughs> ATM. Okay, you and I both know how much money I have in there. Why would I want physical evidence of me taking some of that money out? Sometimes I will print out the receipt and just leave it somewhere close to the ATM. This way someone can find it and have a much better day. That's <laughs> the kind of person I am. I, uh, I think my uncle might be my real dad. <laughs> something I'm dealing with. Uh, he's a big drinker, he loves to drink, my Uncle O. Uh, and every once in a while, he'll get real fucked up. He'll be like I've done something terrible. It's absolutely horrible. It was about, uh, how old are you again? <laughs> yeah, 32 years, nine months ago. <laughs> God damn it, you're a good looking kid, you know what I mean? <sighs> I see so much of myself in you. <laughs> Pretty sure he's my real dad. Paternity test pending. My mom hates that joke. 
My dad really hates that joke. <laughs> Both of them. I don't know which one's my real dad. <laughs> So that's my dad's brother. Uh, on my mom's side, my uncle is bisexual. Uh, and I didn't know this growing up. He was in the closet about it. And uh, when I was younger, I used to just say things that I didn't like were gay, uh, which was not cool. You know, I would just say like, oh, candles, that's gay. Pretzels, gay. <laughs> Boxer briefs, gay. <laughs> and my uncle used to always be like, hey, you know, gay is not a derogatory term. You shouldn't use gay as a derogatory term. And me and my cousin were like eight years old, so we were like, why are you using gay words like derogatory, dude? <laughs> derogatory? That's the gayest word I ever heard in my life. Dude. Stop, that's gay, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm also bipolar. Anybody else crushing mental illness straight in the dick every day of your lives? <laughs> Couple people, two people, yeah. <laughs> Statistically improbable, but we'll roll with that. <laughs> being bipolar is a lot like being uncircumcised. <laughs> it's embarrassing to talk about. Only some women are okay with it, and it's your parents' fault. <laughs> Remember when I first got diagnosed, I was uh, 20 years old. I was in a psych ward. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Doctor comes out, he goes, hey, buddy. <laughs> Don't worry. A lot of entertainers are bipolar. <laughs> Mel Gibson, <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> Started the list with Mel Gibson. <laughs> and Kanye West. You don't start any don't worry list with Mel Gibson <laughs> and Kanye West. You know how many cool people are bipolar? Winston Churchill, Jim Carrey, Ben Stiller. You come at me with Mel Gibson <laughs> and Kanye West? That'd be like telling someone they have HIV and then being like, don't worry, buddy. Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Liberace. Got to start the list with Magic Johnson, right? Start the list with Magic, give a kid some fucking hope. <laughs> a lot of people don't know what bipolar is. They're like, oh, you're happy, and then you're sad? <laughs> that's called being an adult. Like, actually, that's not what bipolar is. Uh, I have bouts of mania, where like I actually think I'm Kanye West. I rap, uh, I do graffiti in broad daylight. I wear a bandana, uh, I chain smoke cigarettes, I talk really fast. This is the perfect uh, indicator of some, how my brain works when I'm manic. I took spell check off my phone. <laughs> so, because I thought I could spell better than the internet. <laughs> That's how my brain's working. Uh, and then I crash, you know, depression, uh, can't get out of bed, uh, brain fog, can't formulate a thought. Uh, it sucks, it's a horrible disease. And I would never wish it on anyone, so it sucks. Uh, and sometimes it gets so bad that I end up in a psych ward. And I would never wish that on anyone either. It's a horrible place to be. But if you ever find yourself in a psych ward, make sure you go to psych ward karaoke. <laughs> It is some of the funniest shit you'll ever see in your life. It's on Wednesdays at Bellevue. Check your local listings. It's a good time. A lot of just single ladies, all the single ladies. Single ladies, all the single ladies. Put your hands up. Up in the court. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> They're getting tight, I like it. Uh... 
Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yes. My, uh, my roommate in the psych ward was a horrible man. Uh, I forget his name, but that doesn't matter. He was humongous. Uh, he didn't eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. He just took everyone's individual sized butters and scooped them into his mouth. <laughs> Uh, he was also like a racist and a homophobe. He kept telling me my pants were too tight. Uh, he called me a faggot motherfucker. I was like, I can't be both of those things. <laughs> 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 and then it was his turn to do karaoke. He couldn't wait. Uh, he got up there, he was like, whoa! YMCA, it's fun to stay at the YMCA. You can hang out with all the boys. And I was laughing maniacally in the corner. Uh, it could have been the meds, uh, or it could have been the fact that the village people, probably the gayest group of men ever assembled. I guess music transcends homophobia. I don't really know how that works. Uh, do a lot of shitty things when I'm manic. Um, I do a lot of drugs. Uh, anybody on drugs right now? Drugs? Oh, no. no. Uh, yeah, I'm sober now, uh, which is good. I've been 200. Thank you. Don't clap. Don't clap. I have no idea how to celebrate. Uh, But it's been almost 300 days. I'm like taking my medicine, it's being sober, going to the therapy, it's, it's a huge improvement. But my life was in fucking shambles before then. Uh, I used to go on benders, huh? Remember a little good old fashioned bender? <laughs> Anybody on a little bender right now? Maybe a little post COVID bender, no? No, you ever cut cocaine up with your health insurance card? <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't have insurance. I used to like to, to smoke some pot once in a while. That's no more. Uh, one time, uh, me and my cousin were, were very high. Uh, and he looks at me, he's like, dude, I got the fucking sickest movie idea you ever heard, bro. You want to hear it? I was like, I can't, man. I'm late for work. He's like, all right, there's these two dudes, right? <laughs> They're fucking best friends, right? And they go to one of those, uh, like, um, like happy ending massage parlors, right? <laughs> and they go in with separate women, but they come at the same time. <laughs> and it forces them to switch bodies. <laughs> so they go back the next day, right? They're like, fuck, we gotta switch back, right? They go back to switch back. <laughs> The whole massage parlor's been shut down by immigration, dude. They took all the women ice and sent them back to like Taiwan or something, right? So now they gotta go to Taiwan to find the same two women that gave them hand jobs at the exact same time so they could come at the exact same time so they could switch back. So I'm writing that movie. Uh, <laughs> gonna call it Really Freaky Friday. <laughs> I think it's got legs. But yeah, I used to go on like these weird benders when I was manic. Uh, one time I was in West 4th Street, very druggy part of town. I don't know if you guys ever been there. People pop out of nowhere like, Coke Molly. <laughs> Cocaine Molly. Broad daylight, broad daylight. So on this particular night, I was like, yeah, sure. He was like, all right, try before you buy. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, he took me in the corner, gave me some cocaine. Uh, and he was like, all right, how much do you want? And I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, you said try before you buy. I tried, and I would like to deny. <laughs> and he just open palm smacked me in the middle of West 4th Street as hard as he could. And I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> it's 
So in retrospect, I probably should have bought some of that cocaine. That's pretty good. Pretty good blow. I, uh, I like that the pandemic is... Uh, you know, I thought it was coming to a close when I wrote that joke, so... Uh, <laughs> No, but it's nice, it's nice, you know, it's 2021, 2020 was a really shitty year. Uh, a lot of people are uh, throwing around the word gender fluid in 2021, uh, right? Like Demi Lovato is gender fluid, Harry Styles, gender fluid. And I'm down for the movement. I think it's beautiful that people feel comfortable in their skin and can uh, be who they really are. Uh, it's just to me, the term gender fluid sounds like a nickname for a comp. Right? As in like, hey babe, can you get a towel to wipe off this gender fluid from your back? <laughs> well like, don't gender fluid yet, don't gender fluid yet, don't gender fluid yet. Did you gender fluid? Did you just gender fluid it in? I'm down for the cause, I really am. I just think they need to rebrand is what I'm saying. Get a PR team in there, switch it up a little bit. I don't have any alternatives, but it's gotta be better than gender fluid. I do have uh, a girlfriend. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, she's incredible. I love her very much. Uh, we have a cat together, because uh, we live together. Uh, we have a credenza together and a cat together. <laughs> and uh, she loves this cat so much, um, probably more than me. Uh, <laughs> She loves it so much that she wants us to get matching tattoos of our cat named Bella. The cat's name is Bella. Uh, I said we should wait till she dies and get tattoos that say, Ciao, Bella. <laughs> Feels good that we made it through COVID together. You know, I'm in a healthy relationship, which is huge for my mental health. Uh, my girlfriend before her was a bag of shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I found out a year and a half into our relationship that she had a sugar daddy the whole time we were dating. And I don't have a joke for that yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell as many people as possible. Her name's Melissa, she lives in Brooklyn. She has short blonde hair, look out. <laughs> Unless you're into that sort of thing, I don't know. I don't know. I should have known that something was going on. She always had like a lot of cash and she didn't work. I thought her parents were giving her money. Then I met her parents, they were wearing NASCAR hats. I was like, this is not where the money's going. <laughs> she, uh, she, yeah, it was, it was crazy. She took us to Mexico. I mean, I guess he took us to Mexico. <laughs> But still, it was nice, it was, it, was, it was nice. I guess if she, he was the sugar daddy, and then she was the sugar baby, I was like the sugar foster child. <laughs> she also never wanted to do anything either. I'd be like, let's go to the movies, let's go to a museum. She'd be like, let's just Netflix and chill. She would actually say that as an adult woman, uh, which is a red flag. I also never really understood that expression, Netflix and chill. Because when I watch a movie with a woman, it's way more like Netflix and... <sighs> hey babe, could you uh, could you shush, just shush? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. How could I know more than you know? About the movie. Do you remember when we picked this shitty movie? It took us like 45 minutes, right? We were just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Then we went to Hulu, then we went to HBO Go. 
And then we got into a little quarrel because you couldn't log in because it was your ex-boyfriend's account. <laughs> then we came back to Netflix. And we picked this shitty movie. Why did we pick this shitty movie? Remember why we picked this shitty movie? Because we said, oh, wow, we both never saw that before. <laughs> right? So how could I know more about her than you know about her? <laughs> Actually, you know more about her, because remember when you were cold, I went in the other room, I got you a blanket? <laughs> so you saw a whole scene that I didn't even see. That that's not even... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. How am I yelling? I'm not yelling. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? Babe, where is the chill? You said something about a chill. There's no chill. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This one's for the fellas. Fellas, you ever get a blowjob after she brushes her teeth? Feels like your dick hole smoking a menthol cigarette? <laughs> Maybe it's for the ladies too, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted to take uh, my girlfriend to fucking Croatia this summer, but you know, COVID, we were supposed to go to Europe. Anybody ever been to Europe here? Make some noise if you've been to Europe. <laughs> Beautiful, oh my God, I love Croatia. That's where my father's from, my uncle, father. Uh... <laughs> so I try to go as much as I can. And in America, there's a feminist movement going on. I don't know if you've seen, uh, it's called Free the Nipple, right? Women going in the streets like, we should be allowed to be topless too. If men can do it, so should we. Free the nipple. And then there's just a group of dudes behind them like, yeah. <laughs> Is this a trick? <laughs> this seems like a trick, right? This is feminism? I thought you guys wanted more money or something. I didn't know this was feminism. <laughs> Sign me the fuck up, baby. I didn't know. Show your dick. I'm sorry, what is it? Free the nipple, yeah, free the nipple. <laughs> I feel like some of you are clapping for the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, let them know. <laughs> but I went to Europe, and let me tell you, in Europe, the whole breast is free. Uh, the areola, free as can be. Uh, the titty meat, free as a bird. <laughs> you go to any beach in, Cro in Croatia or Europe, there, there's just tan breasts everywhere. Uh, and you know, th th it's great. The problem is, uh, I don't know if they don't sell children's bathing suits in Europe, <laughs> but nobody buys children's bathing suits in Europe. So they're just little baby dicks everywhere that you look. <laughs> Titties and baby dicks. And you're trying to enjoy the titties, but it's real hard and there's a little uncircumcised baby dick flapping around your face. I never saw a little baby dick before. It looks like an elbow macaroni. They go in the water, they dip it in the sand. It's like a chicken cutlet baby dick situation. It's awful. That's what I took home from Europe. People take home art, class, culture. I wrote a two and a half minute joke about baby dicks. <laughs> and you guys didn't even like it that much, so. <laughs> I was uh, having sex the other day. Sex, who doesn't like sex, right? Yeah. This is a sex positive group. Uh, we were having sex uh, and she banged her head on the headboard, uh, hard. <laughs> to the point where she started crying. <laughs> yeah. And I was coming. <laughs> she was crying. I was coming. And we locked eyes. 
and now I'm scared that's the only way I'll ever be able to come again. <laughs> I'm in therapy, I am, I'm in therapy. I'm... <laughs> Used to have uh, shitty day jobs. Anybody have a shitty day job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now I'm a mover. Uh, like I move people into other apartments and stuff. You know that thing you wouldn't do for your best friend? <laughs> You remember the worst day of your life? <laughs> I do that every day. <laughs> for money. Uh, but I used to work in a restaurant. Uh, that really sucked too. Um, one day these two dudes came in just like, protein! <laughs> it's like, all right, man, chill out, dude. <laughs> what could I get you to drink? He was like, I'll have a Diet Coke. I run, I get a Diet Coke, I bring it back to the table. He's like, I'm really sorry, but there's something wrong with my Diet Coke. I was like, all right, how many things could be wrong with a Diet Coke? What are you talking about? <laughs> Swear to God, true story, he looked me right in the eyes, he goes, I'm really sorry, but it just doesn't taste enough like your dick. <laughs> and I was like, what do you want me to do about that situation? <laughs> so he didn't miss a beat, he looked me right in the eyes, he goes, could you just take it in the back? and give it a little stir. <laughs> and we were slammed, it was brunch. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, sure. And I picked it up <laughs> off the table and I'm walking around the restaurant. Should I really stick my dick in this guy? <laughs> Diet Coke? That's gotta be a health code violation <laughs> of some kind. We have an A rating. I'm not really trying to fuck with the A rating. So I just uh, refilled it, put a lemon on it. I asked my manager. He was like, no! <laughs> so I brought it back to the table. I gave it to him. He took a sip. He was like, it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> And then he left me a $100 tip. <laughs> you give the tip, you get a tip, baby. That's how it goes. That's how it goes in the service industry, baby. That's how it goes. I just turned 30 uh, two years ago. Uh, pretty cool. And everybody tells you, oh man, your 30s are gonna be great, man. Your 30s, you got a little more money in your pocket. You start figuring out who you are a little bit. Your 20s, you didn't know who you were. I'll tell you where your 30s are. Your 30s are you and all your friends realizing we're not all gonna make it. <laughs> your 30s are all your friends getting their real estate license. Nothing says I'm giving up on my dreams like getting your real estate license. <laughs> Couple of salty realtors in the room. <laughs> Sorry the jewelry business didn't work out, Janine. <laughs> you were good at karaoke, but your album stinks. That was a guttural, deep one, god damn. I do think we got like six months left on Earth. Uh, anybody else think it's time to pack it up? Yeah, I think we did good as a species, you know, the internet. Because I don't think it's gonna be like COVID or some disease or aliens. I think that the internet just fucked us past point of return. Uh, like 50 years ago, you had a foot fetish. You shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> right? But now you go online, there's foot fetish blogs. There's foot fetish forums. There's foot fetish support groups. There's some weirdo from Germany in the corner like, come join our group. We only like the pinky toe. It's a wonderful time. <laughs> no, not the whole foot. The whole foot is for losers. Come join our group. It's a Reddit thread. Come join our Reddit thread. It's wonderful. It's, it's niche market. 
Small niche, no, not Nietzsche. He was German, though. Push it. Push. It's a niche market. Come join our group. Link in the bio. Please subscribe. Link in the bio. Like, I go to Google with my deepest, darkest secrets, right? Shit, I don't want to talk to anyone about. I think I'm going to break the internet with whatever fucked up question I have to ask Google. And I go to type it in. And before I can even get halfway, Google finishes the sentence for me. <laughs> and then a box drops down with way crazier shit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. That person's fucking demented. That person, I hope they're in jail. Can we make sure that person's in prison? But can I eat this Chipotle sandwich I put in the fridge four days ago? So that's what I came here to find out. The other day I had a horrible experience uh, on Google. Um, I went to Google something about my penis. And uh, that box didn't drop down. Google did not finish the sentence for me. And I was like, really, Google? I thought we were boys. Uh, you want me to go to Bing real quick? I'll go to Bing right fucking now, Google. You sure I didn't spell something wrong? Could I get a did you mean, Google? Could I get a fucking did you mean, Google? Luckily, the Wi-Fi was down. My dick is fine. Uh, just had to reset the router. <laughs> yeah. Um, back to the old bipolar stuff. Uh, I do shitty things. Uh, when I'm manic, it's a, it's a bad disease. One time, instead of breaking up with a girl, I just sent her a Drake song. <laughs> it was the one that goes, I tried with you. There's more to life than sleeping in and getting high with you. I had to let go of us to show myself what I could do. And that just didn't sit right with you. She was upset. She didn't write back, uh, but like an hour later, she posted on Instagram a picture of her in a bikini in a shooting range with an M15 in her hand. <laughs> with the caption, fool me one time, shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, fuck the peace sign, load the chopper and let it rain on you. <laughs> That's a J. Cole lyric, not a Drake lyric. But I got the fucking message. Another time, uh, a girl broke up with me because she went through my phone and found a list of women's names that I had slept with in chronological order. Uh, I thought everybody did that. I was also like, why are you so mad? Your name's last on the list. And I went through your phone one night. I found a very similar list. There was women's names on the list. You never even told me you were bisexual. She was like, those were baby names. <laughs> I wanted to have a child with you, you fucking idiot. We don't talk much anymore. Uh, yeah. It's a shitty disease. I read somewhere uh, that because uh, I'm bipolar, I have a 60% higher likelihood of committing suicide. That is a real fact that I just have to live with. Or, I'm not gonna do it, you know, suicide, obviously not a funny thing to joke about, um, but I do know exactly how I would do it. Uh, potatoes. 
I would take every French fry I had to say no to. I would drown myself in a bowl of mashed potatoes. I would take a potato gun straight to the fucking dome. The cops would show up and be like, I don't know what to do. This tater tot showcase is everywhere. This is crazy. You guys were so much fun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody, clap it up for Matt Pavish. I try to break it down, say that I'm a stout.